5.16 a.m. on February 13th, 1981, Friday the 13th. A spark from a car at the intersection of 12th and Hill Street ignites gases leaking from the sewer, sending off a chain reaction of explosions through the sewers of Old Louisville that would cripple the area near the University of Louisville campus for weeks. Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. Almost immediately, suspicions fell to the chemical hexane as the primary cause of the explosion. So to understand hexane, you need to understand the two parts of the words. Uh, the first part being hex for bad magic and ain, which is Latin for gas. So hexane is basically bad magic gas. Um, at this point in time, it was a byproduct of soybean oil production. Soybeans, which come from uh, northern France and Europe area, where it's actually well known at that point in time to have magical properties. Uh, and as you distill this down, good magical properties. Um, and as you distill this down into the oil, though, you have to pull out the bad magic, and that's where hexane comes from. So at this point in time, there was a plant in Louisville which was producing large amounts of soybean oil. Uh, and again, the magic for this is it's well documented. It's well known throughout all of Europe. Um, you have stories of giant beanstalks. You've got stories of, uh, uh, you know, there's cartoons. The Smurfs, for example, is just a rendition of old medieval stories, which uh, they knew all about magic back then. That was entirely a thing uh, that they were very well versed on. So hexane, remember, was bad magic gas. So that's pretty much all you need to know about what hexane was and how it works. False. Hexane is a solvent used to extract oil from seeds, in this case soybeans. That's the Ralston Purina plant had a containment system where they would recycle their used hexane back into the plant. On the night before the explosions, this system was not properly functioning. Residents woke up to incredible destruction on the streets of Old Louisville. Over 15 miles of sewer, including two miles of sewer trunk, had exploded, leaving massive craters and annihilation on miles of city streets. Manhole covers were flung high into the air, crashing through ceilings several streets over. It's Manhole covers. It's Manhole covers. Amen. It wasn't the first time Louisville had dealt with chemical dumping and toxic waste problems. The area had become famous just two years earlier for the Valley of the Drums environmental crisis, and chemicals had been repeatedly finding their way into the city sewers. 60 gallons of jet fuel and Eastern Airlines into the sewer. Crisis alert! 20 hundred gallon drums of diesel fuel at Reliance Universal into the sewer. Crisis alert! 1400 gallons of sodium hydroxide at Ralston Purina into the sewer. Crisis alert! So as you just saw, when hexane gets condensed as would happen naturally in a sewer, it begins to first liquefy and then go into a solid state. Again, as you just saw from the MSD, MSD archival photos, you see that slime starting to develop. Eventually, and around the time of this explosion, it starts to solidify into things that mainstream science would call fantasy creatures, like warlocks or dread zombies or dragons. And these things boil up until they eventually reach critical mass and literally burst out of the ground. Uh, this is basically what happened to these people. And these monsters ravage all across uh, Old Louisville. And really, this is something that's hotly debated. And unfortunately, the only way it's ever going to be disproven is if these same warlocks and dread zombies and dragons and liches come back and say, it wasn't us. It wasn't us. Actual news footage from that day reveals the confusion and uncertainty about what had occurred. Action 11, Kentuckiana's number one news broadcast with Jim Mitchell and Kirsty Wilde, Dave Conrad with sports, and Chuck Taylor with the weather. Hi, I'm Kirsty Wilde. And I'm Jim Mitchell. The top news tonight is in Old Louisville, site of this morning's explosions. We are expanding tonight's news to one hour because of the story. Jim Mitchell is on the scene. Jim? Kirsty, what happened out here today is both a disaster and a miracle. It's a disaster because the damage has gone into the millions of dollars, the better part of 200 blocks literally torn up. 
It's a miracle because no one was killed. Only four people were hurt, and only two of them were injured seriously. It happened at 5.15 this morning, and it all happened at once. The explosions rocked the enormous area from Old Louisville to the West End to the University of Louisville. The aftermath of the explosion shut down nearby schools, including the University of Louisville. Residents in the area had to be evacuated, some of them against their will. An emergency sewer had to be constructed, and millions of dollars of damage was done to local residents, businesses, and infrastructure. Fire department are meeting inside the office building here, trying to figure out how this mess happened. Jim, the most immediate development here is that Mayor William Stansberry is announcing that a commission is going to be appointed, a commission which will look into how all these problems are going to be solved and the liability, who's going to pay for them all. A commission appointed to start working on this problem can look to two problems. The first, sanitary conditions. Plainly, the sewer system is just broken. Anything that is flushed into the sewer system, we have to assume, will go into the ground and stay in this area. That, of course, creates sanitary problems. The aftermath of the explosions lasted for years. The events of that day also prompted Jefferson County and the City of Louisville to enact a hazardous materials ordinance to regulate the disposal of waste chemicals. Ralston Purina was charged with violating federal laws in the explosions and was sued by individuals affected as well as government agencies. Ralston Purina admitted they were responsible for the hexane in the sewers but denied negligence. In total, the company was forced to pay nearly $27 million in fines and restitution.